a lot of the tax incentives in the Inflation uh, Reduction Act for energy efficiency are take place right now. There are several things in there, including not re requiring companies to give a rebate to Medicare if they try to raise so you prescription could say right now, prices Gina, that we're above. In your eye, we're through the worst of the inflation. Get that here. is happening Wait a all Will very it, soon. Are you saying like, the, the drug thing, notwithstanding, we hope you're right about that, that we're through the worst of it? In other words, you and I chat soon again. I hope it's soon again. Things will be better. You know, if you, you, I'm always asked to make projections. I, re, I resist, but I think most of the signs there suggest that inflation will ease. All right, well, it has an ease. That's the bottom line, but hope springs eternal. Uh, if Dean Sperling is right, that eventually it will. Uh, let's go to Daniel DiMartino Booth on this, Jonas Max Ferris, and Barry. Uh, Danielle, the, eventually have hope, it'll ease. Things will get better. The question for the markets and the exasperating point for the markets is we don't think it's anytime soon. What do you think? I think that there is concern. Uh, right now, we, we, we've actually seen a dramatic decline in crude oil prices, and yet, because of refinery outages in the Midwest and on the West Coast right now, we've got gasoline prices going through the roof again at the worst time possibly for the Biden administration as we're less than seven weeks until Election Day. And again, we have, we have an underinvestment in in, in, in energy issue in this country, green is not the solution. You've even heard people who had been former advocates of going that route come out and say, you know what, we have a lot of energy in the United States that we can pull out of the ground to become uh, energy independent from the rest of the world. We just need to make these investments. We're, we're seeing this, Mother Nature's coming, there, there's a hurricane coming. There are reasons that inflation could be lower if it was not for the policies that this, this administration has been pushing through, in my mind, incorrectly. So, Ann Barry, I mean, that was something that the, the banking heads were raising uh, this week in, in testimony before Congress, particularly Jamin Dimon of J.P. Morgan Chase, that if not for the $6 trillion uh, from the federal government, it made an already dicey situation worse. What do you think of that? Uh, I, I think that's right. And I, I do think this topic of um, energy independence, you know, we've seen that Neil come up. Jamie Dimon made comments on that. He thought that putting an end uh, to uh, domestic production w w was very detrimental. And we've also seen in the UK just now, there's the ban on fracking has been lifted. So um, this idea of energy prices, what it's contributing to inflation, what it means to be able to bring inflation down over time, uh, I think is going to be an ongoing debate and one the market's watching very closely. Well, we haven't seen much budge on, on inflation with all the rate hikes we've seen. Now, I know it takes time, Jonas, but uh, typically the theory goes up to a year or more. Do we have to endure this a, a year or more from here? Because it's a year or more from the point of the increases back in March, not a year or more from the first signs of inflation. What do you think? Yeah, well, that's the real question the Federal Reserve is waiting for is when we, we're already at this high elevated price level, is it going to keep cascading higher or level off at this high level? No one's actually expecting prices to go back to where they were a couple of years ago. It's this rate of change we want to see dropping down. I don't think it's going to drop that fast because the consumer hasn't snapped yet. And that's mm. what the Federal Reserve is trying to do is break the back of the consumer so they stop demanding things at these high prices. The problem uh, is more complicated than just the energy market. It's basically they created a lot of money. They gave it to everybody during COVID, trillions of dollars. And this is global. UK was worse than us about a lot of this stuff. That's why their inflation so bad. And then a lot of that money was incentivizing working less. That's really what it did. It, it said, work, here's more money, work at home, work less, be less productive, but consume more. That is a recipe for inflation. It finally broke a multi-decade decline of inflation, which boosted stocks and made this economy the, basically the shining star of the globe. And that could be coming to an end. And the reason is we're trying to solve it just with higher inflation and not and ignore the part that the government gave trillions of dollars out that ultimately they would have to suck back in. If we don't do that, then we might have to go to seven, eight percent mortgages to break the, that market as well as the consumer. We've already seen all the tech stocks collapse, just like the 2000 bubble, all the ones you just showed, the Carvanas, they're all down 80, 90 percent, not the not the monopoly ones, but the consumer ones. And now the question is, are we going to have the real estate crash? Because the last time mortgages were this high, we just got to six and a half percent. We had a mortgage. We had a real estate well, that collapse. That would be a big worry. That would be a big worry. So, Danielle, if it extended to real estate, we don't see that yet. It seems certainly a slowdown. I don't know after the real estate meltdown we experienced more than a decade ago whether we repeat that. Uh, and I know they say oftentimes history doesn't repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme. So what do you see happening next? 
So, uh, Neil, I think that a year from now, because you were talking to, uh, to to Sperling about what are we going to be talking about a year from now, I think a year from now we're actually going to be talking about having an oversupply uh, issue in the in the U.S. housing market. We've got 830,000 apartments coming online here in the next 12 months, and single-family home building is at the highest level since 1973, mm -hmm. uh, when you and I were just, you know, first, first starting here on Fox. Uh, and and uh, th there's going to be, uh, with these high... Of, of mortgages, we are going to see home prices actually decline all over again. Well, we'll have to watch it. And as our, uh, our, our resident Brit here, and you were helping out the, in the, the Queen's coverage, you know, uh, the Prime Minister there has already announced some big signs, tax cuts and the rest, to sort of spur the economy there, maybe freeze some of these utility rates. Uh, the markets collapsed even with this news. The pound fell to another, what, nearly four-decade low. So she's having a tough time winning him over on the traditional things that conservatives run to to sort of give the economy a boost. What did you make of it? Well, the problem is the deficit is going to continue to grow, Neil. So, yes, there were tax cuts um, announced. There were caps on energy bills announced. Um, there were some who uh, herald this as a new dawn of Thatcherism in the UK. It's just not the case. The problem is the fundamentals of the UK economy means the deficit is going to grow. That is why we saw uh, the pound collapse and why some on the street think that we're going to see pound dollar parity. I think it's a lesson, Neil, when we think about what is the trajectory for the US economy, um, we're looking at recession talk getting louder, but we, we do have this problem. Uh, the U.S. is also facing a deficit issue, and their solution from a policy perspective yes, has to be Only so much, yeah, only so much you can do. Guys, I'm, I'm jumping on you, but thank you very, very much.